Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Joff. You can call me Dr. Joff. I am Dr. Jonathan Flordelis, and today we're going to talk about updates for osteoarthritis, especially knee osteoarthritis. Uh, a little bit about myself. Went to medical school in the University of Santo Tomas in Manila. Did my training in orthopedic surgery in the Philippine Orthopedic Center, and I did subspecialty training in Australia and in Chonghua Hospital for joint replacement and adult hip and knee reconstruction. So I have multiple hospital affiliations here in Cebu City and I'm just gonna skip these few things. We're not just going to talk about joint replacement and we're talking about the updates on osteoarthritis and of course I want to share with you tips on how I deal with patients because I know a lot of the patients with arthritis have other issues. Issues like anxiety, being scared to talk to their doctor, scared of the treatments, and of course wanting to know how we can prevent these diseases. Good evening, Mom Leilin. We want to prevent these diseases from happening to us and our family members in the future. So I want to share with you that stress can cause many diseases. It can even cause autoimmune arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis so if you can de-stress yourselves this Sunday this weekend or once a week twice a week even more stress relief the better always time find time for yourself to relax and rejuvenate because the more stressed you are the more you can't sleep you'll have anxiety you'll have high blood sugar you'll have hypertension and these are things that you do not want to have so, moving forward, a lot of the patients who are stressed out were likely to develop multiple autoimmune diseases, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and a lot of the younger patients now are easily stressed out, easily getting anxiety or depression. So, we want to take care of our loved ones, not just the older ones, but also the younger ones here. In the medical field, a lot of the newer doctors are finding it hard to go into residency training because they have these issues and they cannot deal with the stress. Hopefully, you find some way to deal with your stress. It can be lying down, getting a nap. If you have time to read, if you have time to do sports, do an exercise, yoga, pilates, meditation, find time for yourself lang. And that can prevent autoimmune diseases and autoimmune arthritis. Because you have to understand the more stressed you are, the more inflammation or inflammation is the disease causing factor. Inflammation is mukubag inside your body. That means the diseases are brewing. You don't want to get stressed. There is an acute stress like Exercise can be in a good acute stress, but if it's a chronic stress that's always hitting your body, always stressing out your body and your mind, then it's something that may be bad for you. It may induce diseases, like I said, obesity, diabetes, and even arthritis po. Thank you, Ma'am Vivian Heronimo. I'm glad it's clear na po. I want to share with you that I treat my patients in a holistic approach. That means physical is just one part of the patient. We have to also understand that the patients have feelings. They also have things going on in their life, causing them pain. It could be an emotional pain. It could be something that they have to develop spiritually. But again, it's not just physical. That's how we want to treat our patients. And there are even studies showing that mindfulness and breathing techniques, just like Breathing in and out, and if you can breathe slowly and more relaxed, it can reduce your stress. And the breathing is something that I sometimes share with those very anxious patients. Before the surgery, before if I see them in the clinic and they're very anxious, if they have time to do this breathing properly, just breathing through the stomach and not through the chest, if you can do that, you can slowly tap into the present moment, not thinking about the past, not thinking about what's going to be my future, 
if you're always thinking, always thinking, the more stressed you will be. So good evening, Ma'am Edna Lucenio. I hope that you can reduce your stress and improve your mood and sleep. So here are some mindfulness techniques. There is a 5-5-5 five, five, five breathing. That means 5 seconds you inhale. 5 seconds you hold. And 5 seconds you exhale. Very simple technique, but very, very effective if you do it every day. I'm here to share with you that there is a connection with the food that we eat and our joints. We call this the joint that axis. Your hands, your knees, your feet, your, your spine and your pelvis are all parts of the body with joints and whatever you eat can affect them. That is why so much research is going into food and probiotic supplements. Why? Because after COVID, they found out that 70% of the immune system is in the gut. That the different forms of arthritis, it's not just stress that can cause them, it's also what we eat. There's a lot of doctors who think that osteoarthritis is not affected by food so much. It's mainly uric acid and gouty arthritis, which is a separate form of arthritis. So if you did not know that uric acid and gouty arthritis are from food, well, it is. But what we doctors did not understand was that all the other forms of arthritis can also be affected by our foods, the food that we eat. So we used to say there's no such diet for osteoarthritis. There's no such diet for rheumatoid arthritis. It's only a special diet that we give to our patients with high uric acid and gouty arthritis. So here are some foods that can reduce inflammation and pain in your body. Eating ginger, turmeric. Pineapple contains the anti-inflammatory bromelain. Apple cider vinegar. Chia seeds, hemp seeds, and cherries. And avocado here in the Philippines, very good also to reduce inflammation and pain. The more you can reduce inflammation and pain, the better it is for any type of arthritis po. So, I want to share with you also that I want my patients who come to the clinic to feel good. That is the quick win that I want to give them. I hope if I have samples, I can give you some of the samples. Truth is, the past few weeks, we ran out of samples. But a lot of the patients, I want to de-stress them. I want to make them feel comfortable when they're talking with me in the clinic. And of course, help them feel better about how they feel. And giving samples is what I usually do to my patients as long as na'a. So I want to over-deliver and give them the value that they're worth. What I can give them are usually supplements for osteoarthritis, not just the medications. And there's so many medicines, it's so easy to be confused, no? So each patient is different and each patient is unique. That's why there's no one medicine for every arthritis patient. There are different forms of arthritis, but the supplements, we can also say that there are different supplements for different forms of arthritis. Now, we want to be able to serve our patients powerfully. That's why, if possible, if we had all the time in the world, I would like to listen to my patients, even though sometimes they have a novel, na, parang telenovela. It's a really long story that they talk about their injuries from childhood. I also want to be able to examine their knees, being able to touch gives that patient the feeling that they're being cared for. I understand this because some doctors no longer touch their patients after COVID, no? Very afraid. And of course, a lot of their patients who think that they have cancer, they think that their knee is painful because of cancer and they're very afraid, they need reassurance. And that's why we need to take some labs, x-rays. So, yeah. Thank you for your questions, Po. Uh, Mr. Erwin Avila, oh, being overweight is indeed a cause of arthritis. So we want to make sure that if you are able to lose some of the weight, it can lessen your pain. Patients who are 
relatively big or have a muscle imbalance, have clicking in their kneecap, patellar tenderness. That can be one of the causes of patellofemoral arthritis. Instead of the kneecap being in the center of the joint, because of your being overweight or because of the muscle imbalance, it can click and become painful, causing early arthritis. Po. Now, in the front of the knee, we always get x-rays to check the joint space. If the joint space is lessened, it's already a sign of arthritis. Po. This is a severe arthritis patient compared to the patient with no arthritis. You can see that the bone is more square looking. It's squared. There is a osteophyte. There's narrowing of the joint spaces. So osteophytes are the small, small little spines in the side of the joint that is not supposed to be there. There are no spines supposed to be in the knee. It's going to be smooth and rounded. But here is a microscopic section of a joint. You have the bluish white, which is your cartilage, and the brownish portion, which is your bone. Once I see a patient, I tell them that the joint is like a wheel, gulong. The wheel of the car has some, what you call this, rubber, and that rubber is like your cartilage. So with severe arthritis, you sometimes lose that rubber until there's no more rubber in your car wheel. That's severe end-stage osteoarthritis. And there are so many recommendations, but I'm going to break it down, the recommendations from the different countries, so that you can be informed on what you can take. The safest is definitely plain paracetamol. The 500 milligram paracetamol that you use for fever can be used for your knee pain. Please do not exceed three tablets a day and always ask your doctor for. A lot of the patients like to use oils, liniments for the knee and that's also something topical that is recommended by the different organizations around the world. If the patient is still symptomatic, that's the time that we can give the higher pain relievers that you can get from your doctor. And the doctors are really important because you need to consult them if you have GI problems, if you have risks of heart disease, if you have risk of renal disease. We don't want patients to have a heart attack because of your pain relievers. We don't want them to have a kidney problem because of the pain relievers. That's why we always want to ask your doctor for advice. There's so many injections in the knee. There is the steroids, the hyaluronic acid, then the platelet-rich plasma or PRP where we get your own blood, purify it, and inject it inside the knee. A lot of these injections can give some benefit, but again, you need to consult a specialist because not everyone needs these types of injections for arthritis. Others who have meniscal injuries may not benefit much from these osteoarthritis injections. Sometimes you have to get what is called an arthroscopy, a camera that goes inside the knee and cleans up the joint. Po. So again, a small camera cleaning the knee might be needed in some cases. And for cases that have severe arthritis, that have already tried all the medicines, supplements, pain relievers, injections, braces, physical therapy, and weight loss, we advise a total knee replacement procedure. We report combination of metal and polyethylene into the joint, giving the patient a new joint so that they can walk without pain. Most Asians usually have a knee osteoarthritis and most Caucasians have a hip, a ball and socket osteoarthritis in their hip joint. So this is again a hip osteoarthritis. You can see the difference from the normal joint. In a small subset of patients who have arthritis very early in 20 years old, 30 years old, we have to rule out what is called a vascular necrosis. AVN or a vascular necrosis means there's something wrong with the blood supply to the bone and slowly the bone dies. That's why we have the AVN warriors community where 
a lot of the Filipinos with AVN who are already getting a joint replacement at 20, 30 years old come together to help each other in this chat group. And if you are part of the AVN Warriors, we'd like to help you as well with your joints. This is a normal hip. Compare it because it's very round. There's a joint space there in the hip. Compare it with this, which has already arthritis. There's no joint space. And the hip, the head is already deformed. Oh, these are some of the things that we see in severe cases of arthritis. And that's why, just like the knee, we have a total knee replacement. We also have what is called a total hip replacement for cases that have severe arthritis, possibly rheumatoid, osteoarthritis, or severe avascular necrosis of the hip. Okay, so it's both the ball and the socket part. It's a little bit different from the hip replacement we do for fractures. But, again, this is one of the things that we can do for severe arthritis. Here is a patient that I did both hips, and this patient was able to walk very well. We now do minimally invasive surgeries for the hip and the knee without cutting muscles in the hip. We can go inside, and that's why we have patients, even elderly patients, no, after injury or fracture, walking and being discharged after one day after the surgery because they can. Even in knee replacement patients, even though they don't want to be discharged right away, they're already walking in some other countries. They do knee replacements as an outpatient procedure. That's why in some countries like the U.S., they do about 600,000 replacements every year. Patients know when it is time. We want these patients to feel less pain. We want them to leave the hospital early, walk as fast as possible. And we do this doing spe using special protocols like the ERAS. We give them really good anesthesia and strengthen them with rehab. For patients with injury, it's a little different. It's a little more difficult compared to the patients with arthritis. But I want you to know that you can have arthritis and an injury combined. That's why we sometimes give braces to patients. And the secret, well, it's not really a secret, but we have to work as doctors in teams. We have a team. It's not just the surgeon. It's not just the cardiologist, pulmonologist, or rheumatologist. The rehab doctors and therapists, we all work as a team so that the patients can go home after a hospitalization can walk after a replacement of the joints and in the end I want you to know how we treat our patients is so that they can feel a lot better one of the things the supplements that are very popular nowadays again are the probiotics and this is not new we have been using probiotics since 10,000 BC in ancient Egypt and remember most of the immune system is in the gut we discovered this recently. That's why there are so many probiotics nowadays. We found out that changes in the microbacteria inside your stomach can cause inflammation and cause different diseases like cancers, gum disease, arthritis, ulcers. That's why the probiotics are very popular nowadays. It can cause, it can cause or help prevent diseases. We found out that a lot inside the gut causes osteoarthritis and that's why we have questions that why is obesity related to arthritis development could it be the weight possibly but it's also eating those foods that cause more inflammation in the body that's why inflammaging that means inflammation and aging you age faster you become older your body becomes older when you eat the wrong foods and you have early arthritis. The microbiome or the bacteria inside your tummy can help prevent or worsen your inflammation or your arthritis. Good foods like how we prevent dysbiosis are foods with a lot of fiber, natural foods, things that we don't cook like wheat, flour, banana, onions and garlic, asparagus, 
those are prebiotics. And the probiotic supplements, although there are already tablets and sachets and powders available, the naturals are the probiotic milk, the yogurts, which you can also find. There are many probiotics nowadays. I want you to know that these are the newer things that are happening. It's not just going to be about medicines. It's also about what you eat. So I hope you learned something. And thank you so much for your time. This is already 8 p.m. We're going to do a question and answer about osteoarthritis. Uh, let me know if you have questions about knee or hip arthritis, osteoarthritis. This is the part already 8 p.m. where we do our question and answer portion. Po. So if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and I'll try to answer as much as I can. Okay, we have questions here. Good evening, everyone. Uh huh. Expand the, let's expand the comment section and try to answer all the questions that we have. Maayong gabi, walay tingog. Oh, really? I thought nanay tingog. Wala di ay, I'm overweight. So everyone Abila says thank you. Uh, Sydney Ngo is asking, can a torn ligament or torn meniscus heal itself? Uh, very rarely, very rarely can a torn, if you're talking about the ACL, the ligaments like the ACL which are inside of the knee usually do not heal. The meniscus also rarely does it heal. There are ligaments that do heal. It's usually the ligaments outside the joint like the MCL, LCL. Hope that answers your question, Sir Sydney. And again, we are answering any questions that you can ask about the knee, the hip, arthritis. So any questions, I uh, will leave Siguro 15 minutes for question and answer. And once the question and answer is over, we will definitely end the session. Do, do you have the time to listen to me whine and everything and all at once? Good evening, Mam Ma Vivian, Mam Ma Shira. Good evening, Po, Mam Ma Edna Agustino. Good evening din po. From Zamboanga, Zibugay. Oh, from Edna, I think my uncle Jerry is there in Zabugay. Good evening, Ma'am Sheila Durana, Erwin Avila, Ma'am Anne Rosal. Good evening po. Oh, Caroline Danyar is saying, Walay tingog. I thought na-fix na natin yung naaman. Ah, naaman. Okay. Naaman ko na yung tingog. <laughs> Uh, Edna is asking, Doc, ano po dapat gamot inumin for knee and hips pain? Uh, I think we discussed that we really need to consult a doctor before anything to make sure we know the cause of the pain po, Ma'am Edna. For generalized pain, you can take over-the-counter pain relievers, but it is always best that you consult your doctor po. Hmm. So that's hope that answers your question for the really safe medicines. Paracetamol is one that you can take. Same paracetamol that you take for your fever is good for arthritis and it's safer than all the other stronger pain relievers. Again, we want you to consult a doctor so that you don't get any injury in your gut, in your heart, or in your kidney spot. And your doctor will definitely take care of that. Hope that answers your question, Paul. So, uh, very welcome, Sir Sidney Ngo. Thank you, Din, for your question. Hmm. So, we have 14 people in our live currently, 14, 15 viewers. Thanks for all the comments and the shares. So, if you don't have any questions, we might leave early. 
If wala nang mga tanong sa inyo about arthritis, ah, it's really a beautiful night out here. Planning to end the night. Okay. I guess wala nang tanong so maayong gabi sa inyong tanan. If you have any questions, hello. Oh, okay. So we have a question from Ma'am Sheila. Sheila is asking, my mother di na malak makalakaw due to her arthritis one year na. Unsa amo dapat buhaton dog. So if your mother cannot walk for one year, it's really difficult to tell you what she can or cannot do without a proper assessment. Is it because of her arthritis? Is it because of her hips? Or is it because of her knees? Has she seen any other doctors? It's really not the time and it would be beyond the scope of our discussion to talk about just your mother tonight. Really, it will take up more time than what we have. So it's really best if your mother seeks a consultation with a specialist po because she may have multiple problems medically and physically po. But thank you for your question, Ma'am Sheila. Uh, if we can examine your mother, maybe we can help her. But maybe now is not time for the question and answer on arthritis lang, if possible po. So you can PM me. We'll try to discuss that at another time po. Thank you. Mm. Yes, good evening, Sir June. Yigoy. And uh, Edna is asking how much checkup doc layo naman si Bugay sa Cebu. But I'm interested pag magpagamot. The consultation po is 770 but yung seniors meron sila pong 20% discount. I think it's true si Bugay is malayo compared to going to Cebu. I think that's about a 2 to 3 hour car ride before you go to the airport, no? But really, uh, we can try to find a way if you would like po. I hope to see you soon, Mams. Hamstring Christian Loriel Albo. Doc, normal po ba na may hamstring injury after ACL reconstruction? Hamstring injury after ACL reconstruction. So, there are many types of ACL reconstruction, Sir Christian. Thank you. For your question, yung hamstring is one of the ways that we can do an ACL reconstruction. So it really depends on what graft was used. Is it patellar tendon? Is it hamstring? Or is it quads? And that can give you an idea on uh, best, of course, if you've had this reconstruction, to ask your surgeon po. We don't do ACL reconstructions so that we can injure other parts of the body. We want to do this para po you can get back into sports. So, hope that answers your question po. And, ano, napaka-specific, no? Hamstring injury, not very likely. But we do sometimes use hamstrings as our graft for the ACL reconstruction. We don't injure the hamstring, we actually harvest it. Because we use it as the graft. Oh yeah po, Ma'am Edna. Good evening din, Ma'am Nali Narciso. Wow. Ma'am Nali, how are you? Hope you are well. Uh, if there any other questions from the group, we will end in a bit. So, any questions about arthritis would be... Uh, Ma'am Edna is asking, Doc, ask lang on call ka ba Zamboanga City? Uh, if you're asking if I go to Zamboanga City, I am not. I don't usually go there to Zamboanga City, but there are other orthopedic doctors there in Zamboanga City. Po. Uh, we have a question from Dinkar Apatur. Good evening, Doc. Itong arthritis ko po sa tuhod, palipat-lipat ng sakit nito sa paligid ng tuhod. Ko gagaling pa ba po ito? So, if you do have 
an infectious arthritis, meaning arthritis caused by infection. These are the arthritis that can be cured. But if it's an arthritis like osteoarthritis, which is a wear and tear disease, it usually tends to worsen through time. And similar sa gulong ng kotse or car wheel, the more you travel, the more the wheel will wear out. So hindi siya po usually gumagaling. It really depends on the type of arthritis that you have. Most cases of infectious arthritis can be treated and cured, yes, but most cases of the inflammatory arthritis eh, not very often can be cured po. Because it's sometimes if it's osteoarthritis, it's a wear and tear. Hope that answers your question po, Sir Dinkar Apatur. Hmm. Okay, so we have a lot of good questions from the group. And we're about to... So we have a few more minutes left for a question and answer. Uh, I think we are going to end in a bit. So if you have any, we're going to take maybe last two questions. Po. If you have any questions, type it in the chat below and we will try to answer them tonight. If not, maybe we can set a time for this specific question. So last two questions. Any more questions? Kung wala ng question, maybe we can end in two minutes na lang instead of two questions. Okay. So it's been 38 minutes since the live. Hoping we have... Okay, Sir Fritz Garcia. Doc, how about gouty arthritis? Makure pa ba na? For gouty arthritis, Sir Fritz, salamat sa tanong. It can be controlled po. Control yung gusto natin because it is a problem in the family, in the genes that you cannot excrete yung mga crystals. So instead of eating foods that increase the gouty crystals in your body, you try to control the food that you eat and through medicine po. That's how we treat gouty arthritis. Hope that answers your question kasi it's, an, it's a defect talaga inside the body na you have certain foods that you cannot digest and excrete properly. Yan po ang simplest explanation for gouty arthritis. So be careful in what you eat. We do have different posts on gouty arthritis. We also have posts on what you can eat, what you cannot eat, and what you can eat in moderation. So I'll refer you to that na lang po. But short answer is, we control gouty arthritis, we don't cure it. Because it's an inborn thing. Okay, last question for the night. Before we go, it's 8.16 in my watch. We'll take one question before we end the session. And... I'll bid you all good night in advance, mga arthritis warriors. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, shoulder or neck part, matatawag po ba ng arthritis din? So, it really depends what the problem is sa shoulder or neck. There are times na possibly arthritis sa shoulder or neck. There are joints there. And... We'll, ano, we usually examine the patient, get tests to check if arthritis pa or not. But most of the patients, it's more of a tendon injury or stiffness, stiffness ang problem po sa neck or shoulders. Not really arthritis all the time. Thank you for your questions. Everyone, mga arthritis warriors, I want to bid you good night. And I hope to see you guys soon. Have a great night. Happy Sunday po. Bye-bye.